Welcome to Class Noobs. I'm Maria Sidkovets, and I'm a technology brother in Silicon Valley. In today's short lesson, we'll be learning the tool that every software engineer barely knows and uses every day, Git. So what exactly is Git? Well, I think the easiest way to explain it is that it's a software for tracking changes in any set of files. It's also really helpful for programmers to collaborate on developing code. You might have also heard of GitHub, which is an internet host that offers version control using Git. You can basically think of it like Google Drive, but for code. Stop here if you haven't installed Git or made a GitHub account yet. I think it's really important to do it on your own computer so that you can understand what we're learning. Why should you as a noob start using Git? Well, here are a few primary reasons. Now let's get into the first step of working with Git. We need to create a home for your projects to live. This home is what's called a repository, or repo for short. You can store files, images, and much more. Many times people will have a repo for each project that they're working on, or they'll split them up, like at how big companies, they try to keep things more clean. But those repos always end up huge anyways. Let's make one together. There are two main ways to make a repo. The first is to make it locally and then push it to GitHub. And the second is to first make it on GitHub and then clone it onto your computer. The git clone command basically copies the entire repository, including all of its history, onto your computer. Once you've made any change in your repo, git will notice that you made that change, but it basically says it is what it is until you actually force it to care. There are three main commands you'll need to use to make git care. This is honestly always the most confusing part about Git for new, so I'm going to try to explain it carefully. The first step is to package your changes into what's called a commit. Commits allow you to see what your project was like at a certain point in time. They're also really helpful in case you or someone else break something in the code and you want to go back to a previous working version. So how do you tell Git which files to add to a commit? To add a file to a commit, you first need to add it to the staging environment using the git add command. Once you've added all the files you want to the staging environment, then you can package them up using the git commit command. Another way to think about this whole process of adding to the staging environment is by imagining yourself sending an email to a friend, say of some, I don't know, nice AI generated images. You'd first attach those files to the email, which is just like how we used git add. Gmail doesn't know which files you want to send to your friend. And in our case, git doesn't know which ones we want to add either. In your email, you also add a subject line to explain what the contents of it are. This helps to package it all up. The git commit command works the exact same way. It also makes the lives of other developers easier if you can write really good commit messages so that they can easily understand what's packaged in that commit. What we have been doing so far has all been local to your computer. So if we go back to our GitHub and look at our repo, we won't see any of the changes we've made. That's because we haven't told Git to send our information back over to GitHub. What we have been working on is called your local branch, and the one on GitHub is called the remote branch. Now we should try to consolidate the two back together. But first we need to make a new branch. Imagine you're working on a project and you want to test out a new feature but you don't want to change any of the code that's already existing because you don't want to break it. That's where branches come in. In Git, the main branch is called, you guessed it, main. When you want to work on a specific feature, you create what's called a branch, which is exactly what it sounds like, a branch off of the main code. Now our last step is to push the commit in your local branch over to GitHub using the git push command. This will finally allow other people to see your code. GitHub will automatically create the branch for you on the remote repository. And if you're working with other people, you should make what's called a pull request so that others can review your code before you merge into the main branch. Now to our full circle moment, how do you pull all of these changes back onto your computer? In order to get the most recent changes that you have made or others have made onto your computer, you can use the git pull command. Congratulations! Now you have mastered everything you need for Git as a noob. 
As a bonus, here are some advanced new tips. Don't branch off too many times, squash your commits using get rebased, pull new changes frequently, and you can stash any changes that you're working on and then reapply them later on. You can also shorten the git commands by configuring git aliases. Here are some of my favorite git commands. All right, noobs, that's all for today's class. I hope you learned a lot and I'll see you next time.